a lot to digest with our CNN political contributor Paul Bogala, Republican Congressman Pete King of New York, a member of the Select Intelligence Committee and the top Republican on the Homeland Security Committee, Democratic Congressman Keith Ellison of Minnesota, a member of the Foreign Affairs Committee who believes a civilian surge, not a military surge, is the path to success in Afghanistan. Also with us, a veteran administration hand and CNN national security contributor, Fran Townsend. Let me start with this basic premise to you, Congressman King, first, and Congressman Ellison. What did we learn about our Commander-in-Chief today? I think he uh, certainly demonstrated he is the Commander-in-Chief. I think he did the right thing. I have a great regard for General McChrystal, but he was wrong. And by uh, removing General McChrystal, but bringing in General Petraeus, who is a military genius, the President, I think, maximized the situation. Now his burden, though, is to provide the same type of discipline over his civilian team. I mean, this dysfunction and confusion that's going on among his civilian advisors and the uh, Vice President and Secretaries, uh, it just can't go on. It has to, has to be ended. It has to be one team speaking with one voice. Is it dysfunction and confusion, as your colleague says from the Republican side, or is it, is it a debate, a disagreement in the top circles of the administration about policy that is too often, in the President's view, spilling into public? It is a debate about policy which spilled into the public, and I think it's a good debate to have. I think the president was right. He can't have these things aired out in the public this way. But at the end of the day, is the policy right? I think that the insurgency, counterinsurgency policy wasn't the right thing. It's, we needed a counterterrorism policy along with a strong civilian surge to help stabilize Afghan society. I think that's an important debate for us to, to have, and I think that we've seen it displayed in public. Are you any more confident in the military strategy now that it's Petraeus, not McChrystal? And I ask in the context of if you have to vote in the near future, as you will, on funding for these troops, yes or no? Uh, same menu, different waiter. Uh, we need a new policy. So you'll vote no on the right. money for the troops. That's right. Paul, I want you to weigh in, but first I want you to listen to something the president said today, because many viewed this as a test of the president's resolve, some in Washington saying it was a test of his spine. Listen to the president. I don't make this decision based on any difference in policy with General McChrystal, as we are in full agreement about our strategy. Nor do I make this decision out of any sense of personal insult. Really? Yes. I, I mean, I, he's just, you know, he's Mr. Spock. He's remarkably cool. The only person capable, apparently, of angering him is James Carville, who he can't fire because he works for us here at CNN. Uh, I talked to a lot of senior White House aides. It, the president was what you would want. He was resolute. He was very serious. He was very professional about it. Wanted to hear from all sides. But I think uh, Congressman King is right. He showed spine. He asserted civilian control of the military. Uh, and he did send that message, believe me, in private as well as in public to his national security team. Get with the program and don't test me. Because now he's been tested and I think he came up looking very strong. But, but what does it say about the team? You're around in the Bush administration when they were debating the surge, debating Afghanistan, debating things in Iraq. What does it say if the team does have these disagreements still? Well, it's okay to have the disagreements. It's okay to have the debate. That's what you have the White House Situation Room for. Um, but that's where they're supposed to remain. And, and what the president was asserting was his right to make the ultimate decision and have everybody, when they walk out of that room, prepared to execute it or leave. Um, and, and to Congressman King's point, there, have been, there has been some confusion in the senior ranks. You, what is Ambassador Holbrook's role? What about Ambassador Eikenberry in, in Kabul? And so this is an opportunity now, frankly. He's cleaned up. He's made it very clear on the military side. He needs to do the same thing. And I think we saw him send that message on the senior civilian does side. Does he need to do more? Yeah, he does, because it's not just the debate. It's the impact it has in Afghanistan. When you have uh, a Secretary Clinton, a Secretary Gates, and there's not going to be a large pull-down of troops in uh, July of uh, uh, 2011, and then uh, Joe Biden says there's going to be a whole lot of troops coming out. And he says that repeatedly, and you have this fight between Gates and Biden going on. That causes real uh, confusion over in Afghanistan among our allies. And they're wondering, are we going to pull out and just leave them there? We have to show there's a, a, a real a resolve. And if, so long as this confusion is there, you can't blame them uh, in Afghanistan for, you know, uh, covering their bets. They don't want to be involved with us uh, because they're going to pull out and leave them high and dry. You mentioned the deadline. Let's add Senator John McCain's voice to the debate. But he specifically mentioned that today because the president has said we will start to bring them home next summer, July 2011. A lot of people quietly have said unrealistic, especially and because Secretary of the lack Gates of progress so continues to say it's not going to be a large number. Joe Biden continues to say it is going to be a large number. And that's right. causing real angst. Uh, I, I want to bring Congressman Ellison, but let's first listen to Senator McCain today. We have the right strategy, but we cannot allow that strategy to be undercut by a firm date for withdrawal, which sends the message to our friends and, our, and enemies alike that we are not there until we have this successful 
implementation of this strategy. There was a sense, Congressman Ellison, that General McChrystal didn't like a date on a calendar either, but in exchange for getting from the president a commitment of 30,000 plus more troops, he was willing to say, I think I can make that work. Now that you have General Petraeus, who his Iraq experience was, don't give me dates. This should be based on conditions on the ground. Then we bring troops home. Are you even more worried now? This, from your view, this will go on. Well, I'm quite uh, convinced that it will go on unless Congress steps up to really bring some sense to it. I mean, I really think that what, what I'd like to see is a civilian search. We, you know, we have about only a thousand civilians there to help uh, governance, water, roads, education, and really help uh, Afghan society solidify and stabilize so that it can protect itself. I mean, the fact is, is that we have 98,000 troops there. Uh, ISAF makes it 150,000. But, let, but a thousand uh, civilians to actually help Afghan society get its act together. I think that uh, we have an open-ended thing here, and we really need to draw. We need to look carefully at that. Can you see victory? I think we can stabilize Afghanistan, and that to me is victory. If we can uh, uh, defang Al Qaeda and the Taliban and have a reasonably stable government in Afghanistan and prevent them from starting in training camps and losing, uh, using that as a launching pad against the U.S., that's victory. There's no al-Qaeda in Afghanistan. They say less than 100 identified al-Qaeda members in Afghanistan. That's my point. I mean, if we're there to fight terrorism, then let's fight terrorism. We could have a counterterrorism strategy along with helping strengthen civilian society, and we don't have to get into these things where we're losing all kinds of American if troops. I, I agree with President Obama. If, if the Taliban takes over Afghanistan, al-Qaeda comes back in, and how do we launch a counterterrorism uh, strategy if the Taliban is in Afghanistan because Pakistan will walk away from us immediately? Let me tell you that we have to deal with the fact that the Taliban is from Afghanistan. This is their country. They need to have a national process to deal with that, but we should stand back and deal with terrorism as it relates to those folks taking control. But there's going to have to be some kind of a process because this is an Afghan versus Afghan fight at this point. A quick time, I want to call a quick time, White House. Congressman King, in your statement today, you said essentially, I'm paraphrasing, but it's about time the president took charge of this process, referring to some disagreement within the others in the race. Has he been lacking in that regard? I think he has. I mean, you have this open uh, dispute between Joe Biden and uh, Secretary Gates and Secretary Clinton. You have uh, Ambassador Eikenberry, uh, General Jones, uh, President Karzai. Uh, and then uh, General McChrystal being in the middle of it. I mean, I can almost understand General McChrystal's frustration. There's no excuse for what he said, but being on the ground and trying to convey one message to the Afghan government, then you have General Jones, Ambassador Holbrook, uh, Joe Biden, uh, Hillary Clinton, uh, Bob Gates, all saying different things. And that's wrong. You can't send a mixed message to uh, someone you want to be your ally, especially when you're talking about life and death and you're talking about time limits. You know these guys very well, Paul. Do they think they have a problem internally? Again, people love an open and vigorous debate, but right. when it spills over like this, do they think they have a problem? I think it has, with the exception of McChrystal, who last year was leaking like a sieve uh, and trying to pressure the policy process. Uh, no, not as big as we've seen in the past. If you remember the Reagan administration where Secretary Weinberger at Defense didn't speak to Secretary Schultz at State or in the George W. Bush administration where General Powell at the State Department and Rumsfeld at Defense hated each other. This is nothing compared to that. And the president did take command of this. He went to the U.S. Military Academy at West Point. He announced his policy. He, put, he fired the general who was there at the time. He put somebody else in. Turned out to be McChrystal. Uh, so this is the Obama policy. Now, Congressman Ellison, a whole lot of Democrats, more and more Republicans, too, are really worried that this thing is not going to end well. But this is the Obama policy, well, and well, I think everybody does what know what Obama Patriots policy on a troop withdrawal. When Gates says it's going to be a small number and Biden says it's going to be a large number, that's a big difference to people on the ground in Afghanistan. Right. I guess and I would the president's go back and look at what the president said at West Point, and until he yeah. tells us differently, that the rest is all just opinion. There's, there is, as <laughs> George W. Bush said, one decider. Well, in that case, then, uh, everyone should be saying the same thing. You can't have Biden saying one thing and uh, Gates saying another. Fran, does he need to